The expose of a world-class athlete. This is a, how my conversation with Peter Callahan goes down. He is an amazing runner, an amazing person, and he's got a very interesting story, which I hope that you uh, enjoy and learn something from. Without further delay, here's my conversation with Peter Callahan. Enjoy. Hello. All right. I, Better? I think we're back. Sorry about that. Yeah, no worries, man. It happens. It's technology. I, uh, it's technology. Yeah. I, I will sarcastically uh, berate you for not having complete control over your internet bandwidth. I know. I know. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard out here. Uh, it thanks for, hey. uh, for, sorry for the late afternoon, early morning. No, no, morning. no, no, no. It's fine. I'm, early. I'm, I'm I'm an athlete as well, and uh, and in the health and wellness space, and my clients have me up very very early. Um, All right, you know I'm also a father, so uh, my little guy is like, "Hey, it's five o'clock, up up up." Um, Time to go. Indeed, indeed. Wow. So so let's jump right in. Um, I this is this is kind of an unorthodox uh, um, <sighs> kind of setup to this this conversation that, that we're having, but but we uh, we we. We, I'm just going to give our, our, the audience kind of a little backdrop on how uh, we set this conversation up. And then, and then I'd love for you to tell them who you are and, and your accolades and everything. So, so I'm in Memphis, uh, my hometown, probably uh, six, oh gosh, two months ago now at this point. It doesn't matter, but I'm in Memphis and I'm, I'm in the Hertz automobile rental fiasco line Um uh, because at the time of this recording, COVID's coming out, uh, com coming off of kind of the mainstream, and their their the the rental car fleet had been completely depleted. So there's all this uh, you know fiasco going on, and I see this dude, you, um, and he's uh -oh. standing there, and uh, and he's got this all this like I, I recognize camera equipment when I see it, just it's just big bulky Pelican cases and things like that, and I'm like, huh, what's this fella doing? And he also looks like and the athlete vibe was coming off of you. And so I, I was like, Hey, what are you doing? And, and you're like, Hey, I'm Peter. I run really fast for a living. And um, I'm like, well, that's awesome. And then you started throwing some stats out and I said, Holy shit, that's really awesome. Um, and, uh, and he said, you said that you're doing, they're doing a documentary on you. Um, and, uh, and, and then we met and I was like, dude, you should come and come and talk to me um, and tell, tell people your story. Um, and so here we are a, a month or two later and, um, and I'm, 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 I'm happy to be talking to you, but um, is that, that's pretty much accurate, right? That's about how it went down. No, oh, I'm not, I'm frozen again here. <laughs> You're frozen. That's all right. It's okay. We can, we can, it happens. Oh, man. You're good. I can hear you. Oh my gosh. Sorry. That's all good. What, yeah. what country are you in right now? I'm in Belgium. Ah, in Belgium. Belgium. Yeah. I'm in, okay. I'm in Brussels at the moment. Um, for a little bit, yeah. Sorry, my, I'm at my I'm at my my cousin's house over here, which is great. Um, but yeah, I've never really had to never struggled so much with the with the Wi-Fi. So I apologize. Don't don't even worry about it. Um. um so tell tell you know who are you, man? What what what's so uh, awesome about you? I mean, I I know, but, oh, but the people listening and watching don't. Um. Yeah. Well, I I don't know. I don't. I know. Um. Yeah. I I um. Yeah, I'm a runner. I guess I'm I'm um. I don't know. I have kind of a uh, right now. So I'm, I'm in, I'm in Brussels. I've been over here for the past month. Um, so I saw you um, in Memphis, kind of right in the middle of a really sort of intense um, qualification period for Tokyo, where, where basically every single weekend um, was an opportunity to go and, and chase a time. Um, and so I had to basically take every swing I had. Um, and so that meant that meant traveling around the country and traveling over to Europe and getting into getting into some big high profile races to try and to try and run fast. Um, so I'm a I'm a miler um, internationally. I raced the 1500. So 1500 meters is I don't know they call it the metric mile. It's basically 109 meters short of a full mile. So full miles 1609 meters. Um, so if you on a regular track, people usually just say four laps is a mile, but usually on a, on a modern track, it's four laps and a little bit. So they kind of back up the start line about, you know, 10 meters. And then, um, and then you've got four laps and, and, and nine meters. Um, so in the international mile, uh, for the, for the 1500, they just sort of take away that first turn. So you end up starting on the back stretch 
Um, and so you have three laps and three quarters. And, uh, and yes, yeah, so I've been, so I was, uh, I've been, I've been traveling and racing and, and, um, and yeah, sort of very frustratingly just, just missed, just missed Tokyo this year. So I had to run, I'd run 335 and I ran 336. So, um, so it was, uh, it was, it was a bit heartbreaking, um, a bit, you know, a really kind of, you know, um, yeah, really kind of hard, hard, uh, hard past few months is with, with kind of the way that qualifying worked out in the way that some of the, some of the, yeah, selection process looked, but, um, but I gave it a good go. I raced fast. I ran, you know, fastest I've ever run in my life. Um, so it was, you know, was really kind of honing in on it and, and, um, you know, it was a, it was a really, I don't know, tremendous, tremendous journey and a tremendous sort of pursuit that I just felt really lucky to be a part of. And it was one of those things, you know, it's a privilege to be bummed, you know, not to make, not to make the Olympics. Um, and so it's, it's, um, yeah, something, you know, that you chase for a long time and that you chase, you know, that I've been, I've been at this for a while. So I ran, started running in high school. So, um, you know, wasn't someone who joined, you know, started running track when I was a little kid, but, but, um, you know, played all sorts of sports all throughout high school. I played soccer all the way through my senior year of high school, um, was recruited to play in college, to race in college. So I ran, um, so I ran all through college, ran through grad school and then have, have, yeah, since been, been, been racing every, ever since. So it's sort of been this, um, big part of my life for a long time now. Um, and something that has taught me a tremendous amount. It's shaped me into who I am. It's sort of, um, you know, it's, it's something that, um, yeah, it's a very, I don't know, running, running track is a very sort of vulnerable sport in a lot of ways. It really sort of makes you, it makes you sort of, there aren't many layers in between you and, and the performance. Um, I don't know. There's no, there's no, I don't know. I think there's no real way to hide on a track, right? There's, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, I played soccer all the way throughout, you're one of 11 on a soccer field, you're 22 people on a soccer field, you mess up, you got 90 minutes to kind of make up for it. And there's a halftime and you can sort of debrief and there are subs and you can kind of, um, and so that has its own sort of, you know, team element that's really intense and, 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 uh, really unique basketball. You've got timeouts, things like that, but, but, um, but in track, there's no timeout. There's, you know, the, the gun goes off and you've got, you've got, you know, uh, you know, under four minutes to, to sort of make it count and you have to have all your cards prepped and ready to go. And there's sort of no, uh, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a really, it's a, I think, you know, it's one of those individual sports that, you know, throughout college and high school has a team element and then post collegiately that team element kind of goes away. But, um, but when it comes down to it, when, when it's on the track, it's you and, and yourself and, um, you know, you, you, you have, a I don't know. It's a very, very sort of um, a meaningful time on the track. I think it's sort of a very condensed. I don't know. I'm going a little maybe off, off, off. Track. No, no, no. Don't, um, don't let me stop but, you. Please continue. This is very interesting. Uh, yeah. So I, yeah, I, I, um, I don't know. I will. I, I don't, don't mean to. Yeah. So anyway, so apologies for going on, but, <laughs> but, but um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, at, I'm at this kind of interesting point now that you catch me at an interesting time where, where the games are going on and I'm not there. Um, and so there's, you know, there's a little bit of, 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 yeah. So I find myself kind of looking back at my career and seeing, you know, these, the, the tremendous sort of sacrifice and, and, and effort and energy that I put into this um, and saying, Hey, I, you know, I didn't, this was sort of the first goal that I didn't achieve really. Right. Like you start as a, you start as a kid and the goal is, okay, I want to win a con, you know, I want to, you know, win the conference or I want to be all conference in high school. Right. So you win, you get all conference or and then you want to be, that's the thing too with track, right. You can always, the bar can always be high, right. You want to, you win conference, you want to, you want to be all state then you win state. Then you want to be a all American and you want to be a national champion. Then you want you know, so that you can kind of constantly be upping these bars. You want to make this team, you want to make that team. Um, and yeah, so this was this was like the first sort of real big sort of lifelong goal in the sport that I that I set, um, and sort of trying to come to terms with okay, this isn't something that I achieved, um, but still recognizing that hey, there was really tremendous value in this pursuit. And there was really sort of tremendous. I've still gotten a ton out of this journey, and um, and sort of the nature of track and field is such that um, I. I learned a lot 
I grew a lot and I think it's, you know, it's sort of, yeah. Anyways, so that was sort of what I was trying to, when I went down the tangent of why I feel like track is different than other sports, it's sort of, it's, it's sort of me at, at, a, at a, you're catching me at an interesting time where I'm sort of looking back and trying to be introspective and saying, okay, hey, what, what, what about this sport um, has made this still special despite not quite achieving the goal that I, that I was hoping to achieve. What do you feel like you've learned from your experience, Peter? Um, yeah, well, that's a, that's, that's a good question. I think, um, I think I've always, uh, I don't know, there's, I've always kind of, every year I've sort of taken stock and been like, Hey, okay, is this, is this something that I want to do? Right. There's a high opportunity cost to, 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 to running track and field, right. There, there are easier ways to make money there. Are, or, you know, ways to make, to way, you know, it's, it's not the best um, lifestyle all the time, right? Like, I'm, it's pretty lonely. You saw me in a, in a, there was this, this spring I was, you know, I ran, I ran um, every single weekend back to back to back to back. I was California, then I was New York, then I was Boston, then I was Memphis, then I was Nashville, then I was um, Portland, Oregon, then I was Brussels, um, back, like literally every single weekend in a row. Um, and there's sort of a moment where you're like, hey, okay, why, why am I doing this? Like, what's the, you know, you know, your friends are drinking beers, you're going on camping trips, doing things, and you're like, hey, no, I gotta take a nice bath. Like, this is, I'm doing, you know, you're like any sport, like you, you understand, it's sort of these things are, these things, um, these things take commitment and, and, are this, and, are, and are a choice that you're making. Um, and so, yeah, so every year um, I sort of, have you know I have sort of zoomed out um and sort of reevaluate it's like hey why why am I doing this what what are the what are the things that that keep that keep me coming back to the track um and I know that's a little bit of a different question that we've asked but it, but it sort of relates uh for me um and so I'd say first there's this there's this sort of tremendous joy in in trying to see how fast you can go and trying to sort of see what you can squeeze out of your, out of yourself. And so, um, so yes, yeah, so I've run, um, so yeah, I'm, I've, 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 I don't know. I'm, I've run, um, so my 336 this year is like the equivalent usually. So they take your 1500 meters and if they sort of say, okay, worst case scenario, you run another 109 meters, your, your mile time would be this. And so, you know, that's about a 353 mile. Um, is what I ran this year. The fastest I've like officially run a full mile is 355. That's just because there aren't very many, uh, there aren't many, many full miles that often usually people are racing 1500. Um, but there is a tremendous sort of joy in that pursuit, right? Of just, so, so one, I'd say, you know, there's a, there's a tremendous sort of, yeah, there's, 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 it, there's that chasing, chasing of what, how, how you, could you can be, how good you, you know, how, how, how fast you can run is, is a really sort of satisfying thing to do. And something that has this sort of expiration date on it that like, you're like, Hey, you know, I can't, I'm not, can't do this forever. So let's see how it goes. Um, so I'd say, you know, when I'm evaluating every year, Hey, should I do this again? And you're like, Hey, am I still getting satisfaction out of that pursuit? Is that still something that's interesting? Um, and then two, I'd say there's this, there's this, um, there's this like magic when, you're running really fast when you're really fit, when you're sort of really sharp is kind of how I describe it. How a lot of people describe it is sort of, yeah, when you're really kind of in, in some of the best shape of your life, when, when the feedback loop between what your brain sort of registers and how your legs feel is like so tight, when that feedback loop is so sort of in sync, um, but yeah, I'm going to use the word sort of magic again. That's sort of, that's such a, that's such like a, a unique, it's, it's, it doesn't happen often. It only happens every, like, it's rare. It's really rare, but it's a feeling that I, that I, that I sort of chase. Um, and it's a feeling that, that when you can sort of step up to the line and say, okay, I know exactly, I know exactly what I can expect from my body right now. And that's, that's a very sort of, it's very unique. Um, and it's something that, that I never would have sort of experienced had I not re had I not sort of fully 
um, yeah, fully allowed myself to sort of dive into this. Um, yeah, it's like, you know, I can, I can sort of, I can run a, you know, my coach will take my watch from me and he'll have me run a 400 and then he'll say, you know, what was that? And I can say, uh, 58, six and they go 58, five. I'm like, you know, damn it. So there's like, there's like a, there's like a, there's a, there's a really special moment there of that feedback loop, that sort of connection, that sort of really, that really incredible feeling of, of being really in control, um, of what's going on sort of here, you know, you, you can't control anything else, but I, but I've got this sense of, of, of real kind of synchrony. Um, and, and that's, that's an appreciation that I've learned through this sport. Um, and then finally, I'd say kind of the third and like sort of the most kind of significant reason why I keep coming back and that, that teaches me the most is this, is this feeling of just intensity that comes from track. Um, I sort of mentioned it where, you know, you don't, you can't, you're, you can't hide in a team, right? You're sort of, it's you. And, I, and I've always, I've always said that there's, there's no sort of, there's no human experience more intense than, than a four minute track race for me. Um, like I remember sitting in Spanish class when I was in high school and looking at the clock and, and be like, Oh, there are 20 minutes left. And I was like, okay, like, I'm never going to remember these 20 minutes. I'm never like these, these are insignificant. Um, but I'd be like, wait a second, that's 10, 800 meter races. And like each one of those races is so much more intense on sort of a human experience level that you go through, you know, you go through terror, you know, it's like, it's terrifying. You have this, you know, incredible pain, right? Like I sort of described it. You're sort of, you're holding your feet to the fire for as long as you can. And you're hoping that other people pull theirs out before you do. And you're, you, you, you're having this incredible roller coaster of, 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 of elation, of, of real discomfort, of, 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 of an intense sort of competition of desire to beat the guy next to you of, of the, you know, this, this, this flurry of, of decision-making that you have to do right in a 400 meter race, you stay in your lane the whole time. You're not in coming in contact with anybody else, but 800 and above everyone collapses to lane one and you're pushing and shoving and you're getting spiked and you're getting pushed and you're getting, you're, you're getting, you know, stuck on the inside. And so you've got to make decisions. And so there's this incredible sort of whirring of, of decision-making that's going on while you have this sort of discomfort that's sort of layered on top of, of the, 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 the crowd and the people around you and the, and the noise and the intensity of that. So there's this, there's this incredible pressure and, and, you know, and fear and anxiety, and then also elation that sort of comes with, with what it feels like to come down the home stretch and, 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 and run these races. And so, um, so yeah, I, I think not really answering your question. Those are the three things that always bring me back to the sport. Um, sort of the, the one desire of trying to be the fast, I can, fast as I can be to sort of the, the pursuit of that feeling of synchrony and feedback. And then three, just that sort of appreciation for the intensity of the experience. Um, and then I think, you know, that last one for me about what have I learned, um, learning how to sort of navigate that intense experience, I think is something that, that, has, that has served me really well that's taken a long time that, you know, you're a kid and you're, you step up to the state championship for the first time and you're gonna pee your pants, right? Like it's really, it's a scary, experience especially if you have expectations layered onto that and you're you know you've been you've been preparing for a long time to get there um and so you have sort of this this massive build up for um four minutes of incredible intensity um during which you're not going to be able to control everything you're sort of going to be you know you're 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 at the mercy of the 11 other men around you in a lot of ways, but you're also sort of there to be able to kind of take control and apply pressure yourself. Right. That's, I don't know, something I think about a little bit. There's this, you know, you don't in French, there's a, yeah, I don't know. There's this sort of, um, I don't know. The, Tell this, me, I, I want to know. Being, being under pressure. Right. And so instead of being, instead of feeling the pressure, you're sort of the one applying pressure. Um, in French, you have the a pressure is a, a, a uh, a beer on tap, right? So you say, I'm drinking, I'm drinking the pressure, you know, as opposed to 
feeling it. I'm not, I don't feel the pressure. I drink the pressure anyways. But so you're sort of, you know, you're having to kind of learn as a, as a kid, how to manage these kind of high intensity, these, these four minutes of incredible, incredible intensity while recognizing that there are literally years of preparation to get there. Um, and so when I think about what I've learned in this sport, I've learned that you have these, these, you know, I've learned how to kind of prepare for something. I've learned how to, you know, I've, I've, you know, I think of, I think of a race as sort of the ultimate test that you can't cram for. Right. And you have, you, you, you can't fake it. Like you can't fake a race. There's no, there's no way to kind of hide in any way. Um, and, you know, I've had, you know, years of, I've, you know, I've, this, this year was, it was a big one for me in that I, I was, I was really injured in 2019. So I didn't get to race at all in 2019. And then I didn't get to race at all in 2020. And so then I was like, okay, well, like I've had this goal of Tokyo for a long time and I haven't raced in two years and I need to figure out how to, you know, I need to figure out like how to get back on the, on the horse and how to get back out there. And I had, you know, throughout college, I had tons of injuries and I've, um, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've sort of had to overcome a lot of that adversity to sort of say, Oh no, no, wait, like those three things are worth getting back on the track every day are worth getting in the pool are worth getting on the bike. And it's, you know, not to sort of over use cliches or anything, but it's sort of this ultimate like recognition of, of, of really kind of, you know, putting in of, yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, it's sort of it's the ultimate kind of feeling of 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 you know two marshmallows later instead of two mar one marshmallow now kind of 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 um of sort of fact sacrifice. I think in a lot of ways. And so I've um, yeah, I, you know, I I, I I've I've learned um, from people around me. I've been surrounded by some of the best people. I think, you know, athletics that you will see, you know, athletes are some of the best people in the world. I think there is, there's, um, you know, and I think there's something unique about running in that, I mean, throughout college, like how many college kids these days, you know, put their phone down for two hours a day and have nothing to do but suffer with a group of men around them, you know, every day. So I, you know, I have some of the best people some of my best friends are people that, that I got to sort of go on trails with every single day. And we have nothing to do but sort of be in a really uncomfortable place together and, and sort of connect on a level that, that I think is hard to do on college campuses um, otherwise. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling a little bit, but I, think, um, but I think for me, the main thing that I learned was, was yeah, how to deal with really, really those, these, those moments of intensity through preparation that takes you know, I've been doing this for a decade and a half, right? Like this is, you know, I, I step up and, 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 and to, to sort of recognize, you know, I ran two lifetime bests this year. So it's an interesting thing to be in, you know, in the mile and the 800. And so it's an interesting thing to be like, Hey, like those years stacked on top of each other mean something. And there's an accumulation there and there's a build up there. That's, that's, that's not magic. That's really a based on, putting in the work every single day, being consistent, showing up even when you don't want to, um, recognizing that there are long-term goals worth sacrificing for, even if you don't get those goals. Um, and there's a journey, there's a journey that's beautiful, even if it, even if it looks, um, even if it looks pretty rough in the moment, even if it's sweaty and bloody and, and you're sort of, you know, dragging yourself out of bed and you're kind of, yeah, I think there's, there's, you know, it's not glamorous, you know, it's not, you know, um, you know, this isn't the, the big money sport. So we're, you know, it's definitely not glamorous, but it's, um, but it's feels very honest. Um, it feels very sort of, um, yeah, you, you, you're sort of, um, it's, yeah, it's, a, I think it's a beautiful one. It's this, it's a, it's, it's simple. Put your spikes on and you race and you try to beat the guy next to you. And um, I've sort of, yeah, I've, I've grown up with this sport. I've, you know, I'm now 30, I just turned 30 and I was, you know, a high school freshman when I started. So it's, uh, yeah, it's shaped me in a lot of ways. And I think, 
um, I think created some of the best friendships and had me meet some of the best people that I've ever met. Um, and then also sort of established a work ethic in me that I think, um, that I'd like to think will, will serve me well. Um, and, uh, and, uh, I think a unique kind of understanding about how, I don't know, a, 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 a feeling for how my body works that I think will serve me well, even when I'm a, you know, 65 year old out there walking, running around, running around and trying to be fit and trying to, you know, um, get advice from people like you to, to keep me, uh, to keep me moving. Right. Um, anyways, long answer to long, maybe not great answer to your question. But. There's no wrong answer here. I thought that was, that was a very well worded and succinct answer. Um, the feeling that you get when you have one of those, not a perfect race, but a clean race where you're in tune with your body and you, one of the great things about being an athlete is that you truly know yourself. And I, I, I fall back when I'm explaining things to clients and, and, and colleagues um, to a quote from Tyler Durden that says, you know, how much can you really know about yourself if you've never been in a fight before? And that doesn't necessarily mean a fist fight, but like the internal mm -hmm. struggle of, of getting up, of showing up, of, of performing, of climbing, of stacking so that you can, have that 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 coveted perfect experience where you're complete you know exactly what's going to happen and and at the same time you know how rare it is it's like hitting you know i'm not a gambler but you know if you you get you know all all uh, uh you know cherries on the slot machine you know what what's the you know, that's probability but you you stack your chips as much as possible to to have that perfect experience so so my question is to you, uh, if the, the 15 year, the 16 year, the decade and a half that you've been doing this 18 years, I guess, um, is um, what, what, what have you found is your process that's worked best for you to create that perfect experience within a, a race setting? Um, that's a good question. I'd say for me, it starts, um, it starts when I start to, when I start to get hints of it in training, um, I can sort of get, get tastes. I get little, you know, what's nice is, um, um, Well, uh, yeah. So the, 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 my, my process for getting there. Uh, so I know I'm sort of there when I start to, when I start to get hints and training and that's, that's a very special thing where I'm sort of, cause you know, in track we're, we're doing intervals, right? So it's, it's going to be, you know, whatever today I did eight times 400 meters on the track or, you know, I'll do, um, two hundreds or 300, 600, 300, 600 or whatever. And I, and I, and I can sort of dial it down. So, you know, I might do, you know, uh, uh, my coach likes to talk about efforts, um, and so he'll take the watch away from me and he'll say, okay, I want you to run. I want you to run fresh. I want this to be a fresh effort. I want this to be a good effort. I want this to be a hard effort, whatever. Those are sort of the three categories that are kind of, um, you know, based. And, um, and so I'll, you know, I can, I can, when I can start to run these things and focus really on feeling and not on the clock, not on the watch, um, there's sort of this weird, there's this weird thing that happens where I end up, I end up being more. I end up hitting the paces a lot more effectively when, when he takes the watch away from me and I can just really sort of stay internal and say, okay, I just need to focus on being smooth. I need to focus on sort of where my arm, how my arm, how my arms are feeling, how my, how my shoulders, how my shoulder blades are moving, how my, what I'm doing with my knees, how I'm working on hitting, you know, hitting down, you know, working down onto the track. Um, so it, it starts um, in training, really sort of letting myself, letting myself kind of detach from, uh, from the need to hit paces and the need to kind of hit rhythms and instead really sort of stay internal and allow myself to focus on how I'm feeling, the effort that I'm putting in. And then, I, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit more of an abstract uh, way of putting it, I guess, but there's sort of using that as a dress rehearsal for saying, okay, 
let's really focus on this feedback loop that's internal instead of based on something external, like looking at my watch every hundred meters or making sure that I'm on pace at the 200. Instead, just hearing my coach say, you're good, stay on, do whatever, you know, whatever, relax and, and, and really sort of focus on, okay, this is supposed to be a fresh effort. Let's make this a good, smooth, fresh effort. Um, and so really kind of practicing de the development of that, of that, of that sort of um, synchrony in practice, I think is something that's that's been really helpful for me. And then, um, you know, and then too, realizing that, you know, a lot of it is is about staying healthy and being there every day. And so, you know, I'm, I'm someone who's, yeah, who's had a bunch of stress fractures and has had, you know, different injuries here and there. Um, and so a big part of my process, especially kind of later in my career, even early in my career, um, has been about trying to trying to stay consistent and trying to be consistent and figuring out the things that that make my body um, that make my body work um, and let me get up get up every day and do what I love to do, which is I I mean I love I love to run right, um, and so that's a massive part of my process is just making sure that I can step up, that I can lace up my shoes every day. Um, and that is, you know, uh, you know, and, and, um, uh, you know, another big thing that I learned in this sport is that I'm different than uh, and other athletes and they're different than me, right. That we're all sort of different and what works for what works for you isn't going to work for me. And so, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a low mileage guy, right. So one of my best friends in college is who's a two time Olympian in the steeplechase he, he goes and runs over hundred miles in a week and feels great and goes and runs another hundred miles in a week and feels great. And like I, my legs break, like my shin, literally my tibia, you know, I get a stress fracture if I try and do that. So I'm running, you know, a third as much as he's running, but I can still get up to the line and race with him, um, in a mile, you know, and that's, and that's something that, um, you know, took me a long time to sort of recognize, Hey, like, like just because he's doing it doesn't mean I, you know, doesn't mean I have to do it. And the same thing applies sort of to my, to sort of the way that I stay healthy and say, okay, hey, wait, what are the things that he's doing that keep him healthy? Those aren't working for me. I need to do some different things. I need to make sure that I'm, that I'm seeing, you know, a soft tissue guy on these, after these kinds of workouts. I need to make sure that I'm, you know, that I'm, that I'm working my, my ankles every single day, that I'm doing these types of exercises that before bed, I'm really working on my chest and my shoulder posture. Um, and so, yeah, there, 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 are, um, there are all these kinds of pieces to the puzzle for me um, when it comes to, okay, how am I, how can I make sure that I can get to the starting line and say, okay, I, there's a, there's a decent chance that today when the gun goes off, I'm going to feel magic. Um, it starts with being healthy and then it goes to in training every day, sort of really kind of focusing on training that feeling and working on that feeling and then letting that translate into fast times. Um, later on when you when you step onto the track for any workout um what is let's say your your workout is you need to run you know eight efforts eight eight uh 400 meter efforts we'll just call that the workout from getting out of your car or coming out of the dorm or, or whatever you're doing to spikes on the track to your actual warm up, what is your? Because a lot of the reason I'm asking this question, what is your process? Is the question, and mm -hmm. the reason I'm oh, asking yeah, it is yeah. because yeah. Is, is because most people, most recreational athletes, are just kind of like stretch and yeah. good, go, go, and then mm -hmm. injury injury catches up with them. So from yeah. from a world class professional, can you give us uh, some advice on how to? prep ourselves for success when, when training, what, what's your process? Please? Oh yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. So sort of even nuts and bolts process. -wise. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's what I'm curious yeah. about. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I think you're right. even, you know, even watching the Olympic, right? Like you'll see the gun goes off. And, and I think, you know, when I was a kid, I was sort of like, Oh, they just sort of, they just sort of stepped up to the line, huh? Just like that's boom, cool. go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's um, no, it's, I mean, it's, it's actually uh, it's, yeah, it's way more involved in that. So even so, so even a workout, um, a workout. I'm you know I'm getting up in the morning. I'm stretching a little bit. I'm doing some doing some mobility, um, trying to get the trying to get the body to move. Um, but then, yeah, I start. I have a whole I have a whole stretching rope routine. I have a whole um, 
uh, you know, I, I had, I was at the track today. Um, I have, uh, I have lacrosse balls that I'm rolling on. I've got little tools that I'm using on, uh, you know, that I'm, that I'm sort of doing some self mobility on, on some different ligaments and different things that I know have given me trouble in the past and allow my, my ankles to move more freely, my hips to move my, I've got a big, um, uh, you know, I use a big, big rubber band, um, that I do a lot of hip mobility with, um, and so that's before I even, you know, before I'm, I'm sitting there in my Birkenstocks, I'm sitting there barefoot, um, laying on the track, doing, doing some mobility stuff, doing some, um, doing some stretch. I'm not doing any static stretching. I'm doing a lot of kind of mobilizing, moving, um, getting sort of the system, getting the system fired up, trying to, trying to connect, trying to start the pathways going, trying to start getting my, my brain to know where my toes are and my, and my, what my glutes are doing. Um, and then I'm doing some, you know, I have, I have some issues sort of with glute firings. So I've, I'm, I'm working on trying to get my, I'm doing some, um, some activation stuff and my glutes getting those things fired up. And then I, um, and then I'm yeah doing some mobility things to my feet. And then, and then I lace up and go for two miles, go for like a light two miles, um, where I'm, where I'm just, um, where I'm just, yeah, just trying to stay relaxed, trying to stay loose. Um, then after that, it's all the drills. Um, and so that's when I'll start. Um, so I'm already kind of warmed up going into those two miles. And then after the two miles is when it'll start with, um, with, you know, doing my skips and my form exercises, my form drills, um, you know, leg swings, different kinds of different kind of more activation stuff, trying to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm recruiting my glutes again for me. That's, that's sort of, um, been, been one of my issues making sure that my ankle, glutes and ankles for me, I've noticed or if I can get my, if I can get my glutes activated and my ankles mobilized, that a lot of the things start to start to fall into place. And that, you know, that took, that took a long time to, to figure that out because, you know, you're not, people aren't really working on their ankles too much. Um, and then, so, and then I'm doing strides and I'm doing slowly, I'm slowly kind of ramping up intensity. I've got six by a um, hundred meter strides with sort of some drills and mobility, a lot of upper body stuff also. And then, um, what is a stride? A stride is, um, hundred meters start slow and kind of build. And so by the end you're working, by the end you're running. Um, but at the beginning, you know, the first, you know, the first, it's all sort of this, this build up to, to the workout. And so it's even, so within the stride is a workout is a, is a build up. So f first, the first 20 meters are a lot slower than the last 20 meters. Um, and then also within those six strides is a buildup. So the last stride overall is faster than the first stride overall. And so you sort of have this kind of, this sort of building of momentum that sort of starts with you slowly kind of laying on the track and stretching to by the end of that sixth stride, feeling good and feeling warmed up and feeling like the system's a go and that you're firing. Um, and then I'll do a couple sort of longer strides. So two hundreds, um, and then it's like, okay, coach, I'm here, let's start. Um, and that takes an hour. That takes an hour. Um, that was my next so question. Yeah. So if you're looking at the Olympic, you're looking at the Olympic for a race. Um, often those, often it starts in the morning. So races typically on the track or in the, at night and evening. Um, and so usually, I mean, it starts the day before. For me, it starts, um, I, I like to take an ice bath the night before a race. Um, they're sort of differentiating views on that. That's sort of been my process and that's sort of what works for me. Um, it helps me kind of feel, I don't take ice baths during training often, but I take ice baths before race. Since I like sort of my body to have to deal with sort of the recovery process on its own through training. And then, but for a race, I want to, I want to, anyway, so it starts the day before I have a very specific kind of pre-meet day that I do, where I have a certain type of run that I do with certain types of strides that I do. I put my spikes on, I do a lot of visualization preparation through that. Then I take an ice bath. Then the next morning, everyone's doing a shakeout usually before. So say the race is at 9 PM at, you know, 10 AM or 11 AM before lunch, people are out there and they're doing a couple miles. They're starting to feel out. They're starting to kind of remind the body neurologically what's going on and start to sort of make those connections happen again. Um, and then you're getting to this track, you're getting to the stadium, you're putting your feet up. Everyone sort of has their kind of process, um, getting to the track three hours before the race, two hours before the race. Um, and then everyone, I would say to a man, at least to a man, everyone at the one hour mark before their race is starting that warm up process. Um, and I would say even before, you know, even before that, especially at a bigger meets like the Olympics where you have to be, they sort of 
you have to be very, uh, they're very controlling. The meet directors become very controlling. We're, you know, at a small high school meet, they're like, hey, the mile's going off in 10 minutes, you know, make sure you're at the start line. And then if you're not there, the gun goes off and no one really cares. But ideally, uh, you know, you care, but the meet director is not gonna be like, wait, where's, you know, where's Philip? Where, you know, where is he? It's just like, no, the gun goes off. And if you didn't make it, your coach is like, hey, you missed it. Um, whereas at the Olympics, it's like, you know, or at the world, at the European championships or at the NCAA championships or whatever, they have you. 30 minutes before in one room, then they move you to another room 15 minutes before, and they move you to another room 10 minutes before, and then they bring you to the track three minutes before, and then you have to stand on the line for those three minutes. There's a very sort of regimented process that brings you from the kind of depths of the stadium to the starting line. And so that that brings, you know, that backs up your, your warm up time. You have to take that into account when you have your warm up time. And so everyone sort of gets to that starting line having done their full routine that they've done every day, every year, every race consistently. And then they sort of, you have that, that sort of buffer time added in that you have to kind of manage as well. So in, in obstacle course racing, one of the uh, first obstacles is standing in the corral. So you do your warm up. Mine's about 45 to an hour also. And it's mm-hmm. not as regimented because the track is always different. Sometimes it's a mountain. Sometimes yeah. it's a stadium. Um, yeah. In, in here, here's the question is in an international championship um, where they're putting you in these little rooms. Um, uh, how, how do you stay? How do you stay ready? How do you stay warm? Um, you know, if you've got 40 minutes between, you know, Hey, Peter and, and crew, you got to go, you know, off the track into this little room and then we're going to keep moving you into rooms. It must be like mm-hmm. a vibration of just people kind of jumping around and staying, staying loose. So like, how do you, that, that's got to mess up your, your process a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, I mean, just dealing with that, those nerves, right. Of the call room is a big, is a big part of it. So one, the nerves, right. You're, you know, you're, you're usually, the track is closed. You can't get into the stadium, right? So everyone has their warm up. So you're, you know, you have your kind of warm up area. And everyone's kind of running around, trying not really to see each other. Um, everyone's sort of in their own head doing their thing. Um, but then, yeah, you're sort of forced. And, and so, you know, at smaller meets, you can kind of go off and be in your own world. And then you show up to the track, you show up to the start line. And that's when you see, okay, these are the guys that I'm racing against. I've, they see me, I see them. Let's go to war, right? Or whatever, let's sort of battle. Um, Whereas, yeah, so there's the, the one element is bringing that moment of sort of reckoning with those men around you up 30 minutes, right? So all of a sudden you're kind of hanging out in this room with all these guys that you're going to race. And often we know each other, right? This is, this is a small sort of world of people that I've raced. You know, when I talked about racing in New York and then Memphis and then um, Nashville and then California and the port, like, you know, I'm seeing a lot of the same guys often. And a lot of them are really great guys like, that I know well that I've, um, but, you know, before a race, you kind of want to be in your own space. So there's, um, or I want to be in my own space, I'd say. Um, so there's this, there's this kind of mental aspect of, of sitting with these other people and dealing with their energy and your energy and sort of having your process a little bit disrupted because you're, you're used to doing this with 20 minutes to go and this with 15 minutes to go. And instead you're sort of sitting in this room and you're right. There is this, there is this, there's this hum, right? There's this hum of energy. Um, and then you have some people who are totally calm, who are just sitting there very quietly, very silently, sort of putting their shoes on. Um, and you have some who are bouncing. Um, well, that looks like a comfy chair, by the way. Um, yeah, you have some who are bouncing and who are, you know, who are, who are, who are jumping around and who are trying to stay loose. And, and you know, yeah, you hear about a lot in the marathon too, right? Where you have people who have been standing out in the cold before their, before their wave goes, right? Where they're, they're, you know, you're, you're standing there at four o'clock in the morning and you're, you've done your warm up and the gun goes off. I think, uh, yeah, I think some people who run marathons, you know, who aren't sort of in the elite group might not do a warm up in the same way that they would. Cause they're like, Hey, I've got 26 miles. I don't need to run two to warm up. Um, but, um, but yeah, there is, there is sort of the, the emotional moment of, of, of trying to deal with the people around you. And then, yeah. And then there's this kind of weird thing where you're, you need to be warmed up by the time you get in there and then do what you can not to cool down um, while sort of not frying yourself neurologically, right? You're not trying to, 
you don't want to be sitting there doing jumping jacks. Um, and so you sort of get your heart rate up, get that sweat going, and then sort of try to kind of like quiet, try to quiet at least what's going on here. And then, um, and then before the gun goes off, you're allowed to usually do one or two sort of strides again on the track. Um, and then you sort of trust that, you know, hey, the time in the the time in those call rooms hasn't hasn't quite you know that the system is warmed up enough um, that I'm ready to go. But it really, I think it comes down to getting into that room ready. Um, and so I would, yeah, I, I I'd be interested, yeah, into seeing how you know, especially because for you guys, you know, I mean, yeah, we do a lot of upper body stuff and everything, but we don't need, you know, I don't need my like biceps warmed up to do pull-ups or whatever you know it shows how much i know about but like i mean you've got you know you're climbing things and scaling things and crawling through things right. right and so for us i have i know what i need to work on and what i need to get warm and i can sort of um i'm looking for a feeling and i kind of know when i do a stride on the track okay that feeling's there i'm i'm confident i'm not going to pull a hamstring like i'm 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 um i've the system's revved um and as long as i and as long it's tricky. It's really tricky. And that's where experience comes in, where you have people who are experienced. I remember, yeah, I mean, the first time I, I went through that, I was, I was lucky to be, you know, I, I was young. I was a freshman the first time I went to a big meet that had the, that kind of process with, you know, and just being, being terrified and I'm totally botching it and totally doing a terrible job and sitting in the call room and tying my shoes and looking around and, you know, and being, you know, horrified, but yeah, really, really scared. Um, and then coming back the next year and being more comfortable, coming back the third year and having a process, coming back the fourth year and being sort of in control and feeling like I knew what to expect, knew the feelings that I needed to kind of get from my body. Um, and then, you know, being the one who was applying the pressure instead of feeling the pressure, I guess is sort of, um, but yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird process. So when you're watching the games, recognize that all those guys, that, yeah, as you know, same thing for your obstacle races. Like they, there's a lot, there is a, it's the tip of the iceberg, you know, that you're seeing in terms of preparation for that day. And then the tip of the friggin' Antarctica ice, whatever, for the preparation of, of the past 15 years that's taken to get to that moment, you know? Yeah. So, so you mentioned your glutes and uh -huh. I've, I have a saying with, with my athletes who are not all runners. Well, none of them are, are runners on your caliber. They're all, they're all recreational, but I have a saying that the glutes are the roots. And if your glutes aren't firing, then you're in a, usually a, a world of trouble. So what, what's going on with your glutes and, and how, you know, how are you addressing that? Um, yeah. So I, um, I've, I started getting some issues with my hamstrings um, where I started to get some sort of high hamstring tendonitis, tendinopathy stuff going on where, um, and ended up working with a lot of people and seeing a lot of people and, and realizing that the way that my, the way that my foot was striking um, and the way that I was sort of, the way that my stride was, was progressing, like the, how I was progressing through my stride I was really relying on my hamstrings to do all the work um, in that I, um, I was reaching a little bit um, and my, my right glute had sort of decided to, 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 to not, not bear the load. Um, and so I was really relying on my high hamstring to sort of absorb my, my weight, bring the foot under me and then push off. Um, and so I wasn't, I wasn't getting that sort of, straight leg off the back kind of explosiveness through the glute. Um, and that was really putting a lot of stress on the, on the, on the hamstring. So it's this, and it was also coming from my ankles. So I didn't have a lot of, I didn't have as much mobility in my ankle so that as, as my knee was coming over my foot, instead of being able to, it's going to be a little difficult, but as my knee was coming over my foot, here's my foot, here's my, here's, I got my you. Knee. As my knee was coming yeah. over my foot, I didn't have the mobility here so that it would it would pull my heel off the ground. And then it would sort of start the chain. It would start my hamstring instead of being able to kind of stay here and ex and keep this heel, this heel on the ground um, to let my hamstrings, to let my glute start the power. It was, I was having to bend my knee too soon 
because I didn't have the mobility in my ankle, I was having to bend my knee too soon and therefore recruit my hamstring instead of allowing it to work, to start at the glute and work down. So I sort of, um, don't think I did a nice job articulating that, but no, no, I, basically I understand. Because, so my, because my ankles were tight, I was, my knee was bending and I was having to load my hamstrings before I should be loading my hamstring in terms of the cycle of my stride. Um, and wasn't, wasn't getting my glutes to fire. And so I've spent, a, I've spent a lot of time, um, one sort of working on the ankle so that that can, that heel can stay down a little bit longer and allow myself to sort of start from the top down in terms of glute, hamstring, calf. Um, and then, and then to really work on my, my hamstring, my glutes. So I have, I do a whole kind of glute activation series, um, where I'm, uh, I'm really focusing on, on just getting, getting that glute to, to fire. Um, yeah. So mo I think this is, this is very interesting because even if you're not a runner, most people sit all day or, mm -hmm. or, or, you know, and, and when you sit down, your glutes go on vacation and sometimes they don't come back. And that's a very interesting share that you just, um, described in, in that ankle ankle ability can also be a massive proponent in whether your glutes are working when they shouldn't. I mean, in, in what 30 degrees is, is I think what the ankles normal range should be. Um, and, and so I, I guess, uh, you having a, having a glute regimen before you run, I would, I would even argue that having a glute regimen before you even work out before you do anything, is is more important so what what kind of like clamshells like like sideline uh gait cycles like what what is your what is your specific glute process because i think this could be valuable to a lot of people yeah so for me that my issue wasn't glute strength i had plenty of glute strength mm -hmm. um i um you know i've been uh so that that was good so i you know i was doing always i was doing a lot of sort of single leg hip drops balance stuff kind of through that throughout the main thing for me was retraining the glute to actually engage at the right time and to take pressure off the hamstring. So, um, so it was less sort of, it was less, um, sort of clamshells, you know, which were things that I'd done throughout my career and, you know, and, and think are valuable. And, 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 you know, I, I, I have, you know, I have that glute strength, but what was not, you know, I was, I was seeing people that I really trust and, um, and was able to get feedback and, and, and people were like, no, your glutes strong. Like this is strong. It's just not working when you want it to. Um, and so, yeah, so a lot of kind of breaking down the motion of the run of the stride into its different parts and then trying to build it back up with the glute doing what it's supposed to be doing. So, um, so starting in it, you know, I would be, I would, I would, well, one, yeah, I'd be sort of laying down, um, bringing my hips off the ground and then trying to, uh, I'm laying down on my back, putting my weight into my heels to sort of do a, a little mini bridge and then sort of switching my legs side to side, one, one leg at a time, sort of really trying to get the glute to be doing the work that he, keeping my pelvis off the ground instead of my hamstring. Um, and then as, so like, if you look at runners, um, there's a, uh, you know, there's sort of the, the, there are always those pictures of you, of, of you when you're running that look really bad where you're, it's called the down step, right. Where it's sort of when that quad is absorbing everything. But your quad, your quad looks amazing, but the your rest of you looks, looks terrible. Great. Your quad looks great, but the rest you've sort of aged. You it's age just like, <laughs> exactly. And yep. so you have that sort of down step. Um, and so what you want, you know, for what was something that, 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 um, when like really running efficiently comes, it becomes a priority is that you don't want that down step. You don't want, so say you're landing on your right foot. You don't want that photo of that down step to look like your left hip is sagging way below your right hip. So you don't want to like, cause you don't want to be absorbing and then taking off again. So you don't want the, anyways. It's kind of a Baywatch run. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, but you, so what we, we want is sort of your, you're getting you're getting forced into the ground through that hip. So my right foot's my right foot's on the ground, and that photo I don't want it to. So here are my hips. Right foot's on the ground. I don't want it like this. I want it like I'm I'm driving that right leg down into the ground through my hip, so that I'm I'm coming up. Like I'm I'm um, I'm getting power from my hips through my glute 
down into that foot that's that's planted. Um, and so anyway, so while I'm lying on the ground with my heels on the floor and my pelvis off the ground, I'm doing one leg at a time, but I'm also sort of hiking that hiking that hip that's up in the air and engaging that right glute. So left foot's off left foot's off the ground right pelvis is sort of up and engaged while sort of engaged and while while I'm sort of driving weight into that right heel through my glute. Um, so that's one element of the stride that's broken down into sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. laying on the ground. So, so yeah, so, so sort of, I think I, like I said, hey, you're taking the, you're taking the, the stride and you're breaking it down to a disparate elements. And then I said, and then I'm laying on my back. Um, but that's sort of one of the pieces that I'm working on through kind of alternating feet um, and, and making sure that my, my glutes are engaged during that sort of foot al alternation and hip sort of engagement. Um, then I'm doing a lot of stuff where I'm sitting and I come out of my seat and push into the wall uh, on one leg. So I'm sort of doing a, a single leg seated squat where I end up at a, at a pretty sharp angle to the wall. So I, um, I'm sort of leaning and pressing into the wall, but really working on Hey, I want that back knee to be totally straight, and I want that glute to be really firing. Um, and then doing a couple of things where, yeah, I'm doing sort of um, uh, cycling, cycling my legs through part of the through part of the. Um, so I'll go side onto the wall, um, have my left leg planted, my inside, the, the leg closest to the wall, just sort of as if it's on a bike, as if it's on a on a pedal, and I'm sort of really cycle. cycling. Exactly, going through my gait cycle and then really sort of focusing on, okay, where is my foot landing below my body? How is my knee, is my knee nice and straight? Making sure that my glute is sort of, is sort of timed, is, is sort of timed to be firing at the right time. And so, um, so it's, it's a really sort of neurological sort of stuff for me more so, than strength stuff. So you're, I completely follow that. And so, so you're, when you're doing your kind of wall run, we'll call it maybe where like one, one arm is on the wall and your inside uh -huh. leg is, yep. is cycling. Yep. Are you, are you, are you midfoot striking and going into mm -hmm. triple extension in the back and then bringing it through into triple flexion and, yes. and trying to recreate your maximum intensity mechanics? Yes. Like when you so at the end of a stride, when you're, when you're in mm -hmm. flight, and yeah. you're, I mean, and you're, you're full, just, just coming up. Is that what you're trying to replicate? Yeah. So I'm not, it's, it's not so much trying to be explosive into the ground, but I am trying to make sure that that foot strike is in the right place, that that mid foot strike that, um, so one of the other things is cause it was my hamstring that do, it was doing a lot of the work. I was reaching a little bit. And so for me, just, and I, I'm, 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 I'm a mid foot striker but I was just, I was just doing that midfoot strike just slightly too far forward. And so I needed to bring on that right leg and I needed to bring that back just a little bit. Um, and so for me kind of retraining that rhythm, retraining that cycle to make sure that I was landing just underneath me so that I could recruit my glute. Um, so it's, it's, and then I am trying to stay, I'm trying to stay, I'm using my hamstring to sort of pull my foot through that part of the stride, but I'm not being, I'm not like bounding there. It's not so much of a, it's not so much explosive as it is sort of deliberately striking below me. Um, whereas the one where I'm coming out of my chair where I'm side on and then I come out and really, that wasn't helpful, but I come out and I'm, and I'm trying to press the wall off of one leg. That one's a lot more explosive where I'm really in full extension, straight leg, straight line from, you know, toe from head, from top of my head to heel. Um, and trying to be really, and, and, and having that left and having that other leg driving that other knee driving. So, um, so you're, it sounds like you're painting. Uh, so you've got, you've got your, your rhythm and timing exercise, the wall run, mm -hmm. and you've got your power exercise. So, so yeah. what I'm envisioning for the power is you've got, so you're kind of, you're, you're at a, your spine is at about 45 driving up and out into that yep. full extension into a wall how it's yeah. necessary to, 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 to complete the gate cycle. Um, yeah. And so what, what are your, what, what are the, what are the kind of the, the fine, finer variables look like when you're doing that? If you're like, Hey, I've got to, can you still hear me? Okay. Cause this guy's just like, yeah, yeah. I can so, hear you. Uh, uh, literally just 
blowing leaves right off. He's just right, like somebody right made him to stand now. outside my office. Like, hey, all right, there you go. Um, so, so what, what the the question was in case in case uh, the, the it was blown away. There was um, what what are the finer variables? Um, like how many how many chair explosions or or how long? Uh, how many wall cycles? And uh, you said there was another one in there. Can you can you rehash that? The laying so, laying down. Um, uh, the bridges, the baby bridges, the, the bridges. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll do, you know, I'll do, um, you know, three times 15 of the baby bridges, um, where I'm really sort of just alternating one leg at a time. I'm laying on my back. That, that's the one that kind of starts it because it's sort of, it's, there's not a lot of mobility involved. It's just sort of really kind of isolating that hamstring and really sort of working on, on, on get, sorry, isolating that glute and getting it to, getting it to fire. So I'll do, yeah, I'll do, I'll do, um, you know, uh, one by 15 each side. So sorry, three by 15. So I ended up doing 30. So I'm going 15 each side times three. So I ended up doing 30. So one, one, uh, three by 30 basically is how I count it. Um, and then I'll do, um, yeah, similarly, probably, uh, three by 10 of the, of the, um, of the cycling through against the wall, um, where I have, where I'm doing sort of the, the bicycle, um, sort of rotation, um, knee up, toe, toe up, knee up, uh, chest up, and then kind of make sure that that foot strike is right below me. And then sort of try to extend through the back, through the back side of the, of, of the stride with my glute and then bring it back up to the, to the start position. So I can do three by 10 there. The one that I have to be a little bit careful with is the explosive one into the wall, um, where I'm doing a single leg squat into the, into that sort of 45 degree angle against the wall. Um, that one, I, I probably do two times six, um, with each leg run because it's, it's just sort of, I'm really squeezing that glute, um, into the wall. And I sort of hold it there for a second where I'm really sort of engaging. Um, and that, you know, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a power athlete, right. I'm, I'm, um, I'm not a sprinter, I'm a miler. And so, um, so I'm not doing a lot of explosive weight stuff. And so for me, that's one that, 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 um, that I just, I don't do quite as many. I do, I probably do 12, uh, 12 with each leg, um, by the end where I'm just sort of really kind of focusing on, okay. You know, cause I mean, you know, 12 single leg squats or whatever is, is already a little bit, um, you know, not for you, but, uh, for me, I, I do, you know, for, you know, I always joke that middle distance runners, you know, are the lamest at the gym, right. Where everybody else is sitting there doing throwing weights around <laughs> and I'm sitting, I'm literally, I literally do stuff with two pound weights. Right. Um, so, so that's sort of, um, but I'm wearing short shorts. So at least, you know, at least I, uh, at least I look, at least I look extra foolish doing it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I'd say that's, that's sort of the, the routine of, of, of before I even, before I'm running a step, I'm going through at least those three exercises to make sure that those glutes are firing. And then, you know, and then a bunch of other stuff too, but, but yeah, those yeah. are the things that I've, that I've, that I found have helped me sort of work through this yeah. I mean, there's this, this, it's, you know, what, you know how it is when you're training for something and you're, you're, you're just kind of always on the edge of injury. And so you have something that comes up and you kind of whack a mole it down, but you're sort of, I think, it, you know, always something new is, is bugging. Um, but I think what I'm, what I'm, what I feel good about is that, I, you know, I, I've been, I've, um, I've been able to surround myself with some really smart people who know what they're doing and how the body works. And I've spent a lot of time, learning how my body works and learning from them and piecing together this, this routine. And when something starts to come up more often than not, I'm like, okay, I've had that before. I know how that's like, and I also have a log that goes back my entire career. So I can go back and say, okay, Hey, how did I deal with this little back twinge? Uh, the last time it came up in 2016, how did I deal with this little shin injury? How did I deal with this little knee thing that's bugging? Um, and some can, and can sort of, you know, that, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a real privilege at this point. You know, that's, that's a, that's something that's really nice at this point in my career to be able to look back and say, okay, Hey, I've accumulated this knowledge. Um, and I'm, and I, and I appreciate that the body is a system and that it's not, okay, Hey, you know, a younger me, a younger Peter would have said, Hey, your hamstrings hurting. Let's work on your hamstring. And instead it's come to, Hey, Peter, your hamstrings hurting. Let's work on your ankle and let's work on your glutes. Um, and so that, that's been, that's been, um, you know, a, a long process for me to kind of learn how this thing works. Um, but it's, uh, but I find myself now at a place where I, where I'm able to kind of manage the, the, the weird things that prop up when you're training really hard all, all the time. Um, and when you're sort of 
trying to recover and trying to travel and trying to sort of get to the line race ready nine weeks in a row um, and sort of try to do that effectively. So, so yeah. I think that's, that's uh, those three. I know I'll be adding them to my repertoire. I, I have, uh, you started talking about high hamstring tendinopathy and I was like, ah, ha, ha, because I, I don't, it's, it's the worst feeling in the world, A, to have that happen, because I've read mm-hmm. 100 articles that are like, yeah, you're SOL, buddy, sorry. Um, mm-hmm. But to have someone as, as accomplished as you being like, actually, you're not SOL. The glutes, yeah. indeed, are where you need to search. Um, so thank yeah. you for that. And what I have done is- some other things. I have some, done some dry needling with the high hamstring. I have some done some shockwave therapy through the high hamstring. Uh, that's helped quite a bit, too. Um, okay. But really, really been glutes and glutes and ankles. Um, one last thing, not oh, yeah, the yeah. last thing, but another thing that has sure. helped me a lot that I had a coach in college who um, would make us run half a mile and then we'd all have to, we'd all stop, gather around him in a circle basically and take our shoes off and massage our feet while he was talking. We'd have to massage our own feet for, you know, the 10 minutes that he was talking. And, and his main thing was, hey, like you're going to go run 10 miles today and that's, you know, X many foot strikes you're, you know, most of us are midfoot strikers, right? He's like, all of your weight is coming in on that. So there's one part of your foot. Let's get this foot moving, right? Let's get this foot. And so, you know, for me every day, I'm massaging my feet, I'm moving it. I've got a lacrosse ball that I'm really sort of like more than I would have originally. I've been like, oh, I'm like pushing a little too hard on this lacrosse ball, like with, through my arch and like really making sure that, you know, you've got, you got two arches in your foot, right? You got this one and you got this one. You got the one that goes like, you know, the, the toe, pinky to pinky to big toe. It needs to be mobile. Yeah, exactly. And then heel to toe needs to be mobile. And so really working that foot for me has been something that that's made quite a difference also sort of just really realizing like, Hey, okay. You know, and, and, and that was a thing for me too. Like I, oh, I, was, I have shin splints or I have a shin injury or I've got, and being like, okay, stop wailing on your shin muscles. Like get the foot movement, right. Get the ankles moving, right. Make sure that make sure that what's actually in contact with the ground is able to absorb those forces in a way that, that like it's supposed to and not getting gunky because, you know, those small muscles, those small bones in your feet start to kind of lock up a little bit if you're not careful and you're not really being sort of deliberate about their mobility. Yeah. Anyways, sorry to interrupt. No, 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 that's fine. No, this is, this is, this isn't about me, man. Yeah. This is, this yeah. is your story. What's, what's, what is, what is your next step? What, what's next for, for Peter Callahan? Yeah, so I'm at a I'm at a I'm at a crossroads um, in 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 some ways. I think um, I think yeah. So I'm 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 in I'm in Belgium right now, uh, which is where um, I usually um, spent. I'm I'm half Belgian, half American. So my dad's from Chicago, my mom's from Brussels. Uh, my mom's from Antwerp, and I'm in Brussels. Um, and so I have you know massive family over here, and I, I end up spending a lot of time here. Um, I actually compete for the Belgian national team. So that's sort of how I've, I'm, I'm out here quite a bit um, throughout the summers. There's a really excellent sort of racing circuit through Europe and a lot of it's based, based in, in Belgium. Um, so I just raced on Saturday. I raced the Saturday before that. I raced uh, the Belgian national championships a few weeks before that. Um, and so I was planning on staying here longer. Um, but I just figured out that I will actually be in another race in Memphis on the 15th and six, uh, 14th and 15th. Um, and so I've had to, so I kind of had to scramble and I'm heading back to the U S uh, this week, um, to go and prep for prep for that race in Memphis. Um, so yeah, I mean, there was, you know, there was this, this, uh, tough, tough time of, of not making Tokyo and sort of licking my wounds a little bit from that and, and, uh, and just sort of, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just sort of trying to kind of come you know, again, these are one of those things that these are very public goals, right? These are very, these are, you know, every, everyone who's re- running is trying to run there and trying to see that um, not as a failure, but as a real gift too, you know, as, 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 as again, I said at the beginning, it's a, it's a privilege to be bummed, you know, and I was, and I was bummed and that I was, I was really waiting to the day of the world rankings coming out to see where I was stacking up, you know, and, and didn't quite, didn't quite make the cut. And so, um, you know, trying to kind of emphasize the the importance of the journey and 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 um, then deciding kind of how to how to move forward. And I um, and yeah, so that's that's a discussion where uh, you know the other thing that's exciting is that again I told you I, I ran two 
um, PBs, so two personal bests or lifetime bests, this in the last, I ran one a couple weeks ago in the 800, and then I ran one a couple weeks after I saw you um, in, in Portland. Um, and that's, and that feels special. Um, you know, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. And so that to, to run, to run a new PR, um, is, is really exciting. Um, and it's sort of, is an indication that I'm doing things right because, you know, I've been fit before and I've been fully invested in training before. And so it's exciting to get to a point where I've been very consistent. I was, I was very consistent this summer. I ran, um, I think nine, the equivalent of nine sub four minute miles in, every week in a row. Um, so I was very consistent and I was very sort of on, um, on a good pace on a good, I'm just sort of, I'd found a good rhythm. Um, and so, yeah, so, 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 uh, you know, initially right after not making the games, I was like, you know, I sort of need to take a step back and need to take a deep breath. And then I'm realizing, you know what, like, Hey, I'm, I'm, it takes years of consistency to get to this point and get to this level of fitness. Um, and you know, I would really regret not sort of capitalizing on it. Um, and so now I'm, now I'm, I've been jumping into some races. I've got this really great race in Memphis. That'll be, um, you know, I think, I think on ESPN in a couple weeks, um, 14th, on 13th, 14th and 15th. Um, I've got, um, so if you're, if you're in Memphis, you could come check it out. Otherwise, you know, um, but it'll be, that'll be another really good opportunity to run another PR. And, um, and yeah, it's sort of, I'm, uh, you know, there's also the, the window to qualify for next year's world championships is opened. And so I'm at a bit of a point where I'm like, Hey, okay, I'm, I'm 30. I'm, I've ran the fastest I've ever run in my life. Do I want to do this for another year? Do I not? Don't know yet. Um, but I do know that I'm the fittest I've ever been. I'm running the fastest I've ever run. Um, and I would really regret not making use of that, even though, you know, summertime is great. I want to go and you know, drink some Belgian beers with my cousins and, and, and eat some waffles and eat some fries and, um, you know, and, and, uh, enjoy summer and summer and wherever. Um, but I, you know, I have the rest of my life to go do those things. So right now I'm, um, so what's next big picture. Don't know what's next these next months. Um, at least, you know, the, the, the pro season goes until early September. Um, so I've got another six weeks to five, six weeks to really, you know, get into some, get, hopefully get onto some fast starting lines um, and then have some really intense, you know, some really intense uh, races to kind of, you know, bank a little bit of, yeah, and some of that intensity for later when I might not be able to get it in the same way. What, what is, <clears throat> I asked this, <clears throat> I asked this to all my guests and I think it's an interesting question. Um, maybe it's not an interesting question. I think it's interesting. Um, and there's no wrong answer here. Um, there might not even be an answer for you, but what, what are you giving back to the world? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's an interesting question I wrestle with. Um, because, you know, I was talking to, you know, I was talking to, yeah, I, I, um, I wrestle with it a little bit because in some ways this feels like a selfish pursuit, right? In some ways I'm, I'm, I'm um, I'm running as fast as I can because I want to see how fast I can run, um, and what you know how is how is that bettering the world, right? How is this not how how is this pursuit not selfish? Um, and so that's something that I that I've wrestled with a lot. And through through college, um, it was. Um, a little clearer in some ways for me, uh, where able, where I can sort of be, um, I don't know, sport, sport in college is weird. Uh, but also, but, you know, no, I, mean, I had moments where I could say like, hey, like, this is weird. But I, if I win this race, like I, you know, if we win this conference championship, my coach will earn a bonus, an X amount of money bonus. And like, I like my coach. I like my coach's family. I want him to earn this bonus. So let's go run this one for coach. Um, and um, so that was kind of one way that I was sort of managing, okay, like, how is this, you know, and, and that, that, that's sort of weak. Um, since then, I have um, Yeah, I mean, you're asking a question that I've been wrestling with, what am I giving back to the world through sport, particularly? Um, and I've 
one, I have, I have a coach that's incredible. That was the, the, they're actually the documentary that, that you saw them making is about him and my relationship in a lot of ways. And he um, was battling cancer this year, this past year and, and, and kind of came back. And so there's this, this really sort of meaningful time, I think for both of us, but um, for me where, you know, I would, I would go to see him at chemo, getting chemo where they're like breaking down his body. And then he would come to the track with a stopwatch to sort of try and build me up. And there was this, you know, I think, I think a lot of, uh, in a lot of ways, I, I think um, a lot about my relationship with him is something that I, that, that I, that I'm trying to build through this that's greater than the sport. Um, and that, um, and that, that's important to me. Um, giving to the world and that, you know, I think he's a very special man that does a lot for the world. Um, and um, I'd like to sort of be a part of his world in any way I can. Um, and then lastly, I think, you know, something that, that I think is easy to forget, um, but it's something that I, that, um, that I felt really lucky to have people kind of reach out to me over these past couple of weeks when once um, kind of became clear that, that I wasn't making the games um, was I think, I think um, you forget, um, you know, I, I, um, I don't know at the risk, I, I don't know. I hesitate to say this because I think it sounds sort of self-important and I think it's difficult, but I, but I, um, but yeah, I've, I've, I've had friends who've like really, whose, whose journeys have really kind of impacted me. Um, and I had, I, I, I felt really lucky to have people reach out and say like, Hey, Peter, like this, you're, you're sort of, um, the way that you've approached these challenges have, have, have had an impact on me. And that's something that for me, I've, I've done some coaching. I coached, I was a volunteer assistant at Northwestern for a while. I've helped at Princeton for a little bit. I've helped some co high school coach. I did, I've done some high school coaching. I've done some middle school coaching. Um, and I think back to sort of the impact that coaches have had on me in my life, which is, I mean, enormous, right? Like, I, you know, for me in college, like you don't see anyone every day. Like you don't see your parents, like all of a sudden you go from seeing your parents every day to doing this to only, do you see your, you, I saw my coach, you know, every day, you know, except for the NCAA sanctioned days that they're not supposed to see us. But like, you know, you're seeing this person, you're seeing this person every day for four years that are wildly formidable for you. Um, and this sport has given me that opportunity to sort of, to be, to, to, to what I, to, to be in that position, to sort of be coaching others. Um, and I hope that I've done, done that role justice. Um, and I've, I've been sort of, um, very kind of careful about how I approach that role and I've enjoyed it. Um, I'm not doing it right now. I'm not coaching right now. Um, but there is this, there is the, something that I think about and there's something that my friend has this podcast called the good athlete project. That's, that's, that's quite interesting. And I've went, gone on that and, and he talks about sort of the power of sport and sort of the power of the platform of sport. Um, and how I think, you know, I feel really lucky to through this, through what I've been able to do on the track, I, I, I find myself having some legitimacy um, as sort of someone who can speak to that, maybe not very effectively in this forum, but I think one-on-one -on -one with athletes, I feel, uh, you know, I feel like, um, I feel like there's a real opportunity there to, to speak through, to speak to the discomfort, to speak to the, the process, to speak to the journey, to speak to kind of the, the issues that I, the, the sort of challenges that they're going through and sort of being able to say, Hey, no, I, I, I've, I've seen something similar to this and then trying to kind of apply that more broadly. Um, so what am I doing to the world for the world? I think, I don't know yet. I'd like to think that I've touched some people's lives in a way that has been meaningful for them. Um, I know many through this sport have touched my life in a way that's meaningful for me. And I hope that I've been able to do the same for others. Um, you know, today on the track here in Brussels, I ran into two I young Irish guys who were out there doing 400 meter repeats as well and was chatting with them. And they were excited about where I was racing and what I was doing. And we were, you know, and I sort of saw like, Hey, like, you know, anyways, I, I hope I, I, you know, I was able to create a connection with them. Um, and I know that they're, 
not that not that I not that that connection is wildly impactful for them, but this is a community, and it's it's and I feel really lucky to be able to be tapped into that community, and I feel lucky to have sort of a little bit of legitimacy within that community in a way that I think um, can I hope to leverage for for kind of positivity. Um, so. Yeah, in the moment, I, I, I hope, I hope that I've been able to, to sort of do what many others have done for me and that I've been wildly inspired and wildly touched by some folks. And I don't think I'm wildly inspiring or wild in that way, but I hope that I've been able to kind of do that to some folks. Um, but then more importantly, I do think that, I think that the lessons that I've learned through this are things that I will then, that I'll be able to take for the rest of my life and then hopefully kind of be able to apply. Um, in all the, you know, I, I mean, this, this, I've, this sport is a part of me. This sport has, has made many parts of me. Um, and I hope that those parts um, will be used, will be used for, for good. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, you know, that's a great question because it's something that I've, it's genuinely something that I've thought a lot about. I'm, you know, I'm literally like, I'm like, hey, how is, like, what, why, how is this not a selfish pursuit? Um, because it, in some ways it feels very lonely. Running track and field at a professional level feels very lonely where you're traveling alone. You saw me at a time where this, these guys were coming and filming, but um, you know, and I do think that that story, which isn't necessarily about me, but the one that they're filming, but there's really about my coach and his sort of overcoming adversity in the ways that we have a relationship. I think that's, an, that, I think that, I mean, he, that my coach inspires me every day and I, and I can't wait, you know, I hope that they, I think that they've done a nice job of capturing that. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I like to think that I'm being sort of deliberate about the decisions that I make in this world. And I like to think that my time in athletics has given me a unique perspective to sort of guide those decisions. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm, 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 I'm I think I'm, 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 sort of struggling because it's something that I'm, I'm wrestling with and it's that's something fine, that, yeah, man. I mean, that's, you know, I want to, I, yeah, I want to be doing good. Right. Um, and right now I don't, you know, I, I don't have, I don't have, uh, you know, all I can do is, 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 is sort of take the gifts that I'm the gifts that I have access to and make the best use out of them as I can. And, yeah. um, and through this sport and, and try to, and I think try to be really honest about it and try to be really sort of, genuine about, Hey, this, these blessings are, are great and really hard. And, and I'm, I'm putting in the work and hopefully, you know, I hope that that resonates with some people. I'm not very big on social media. I don't do a very good job at that. I, I sort of, um, I found that to be a bit of a distraction for me, the way that, that my kind of, I, I, I gain, um, I struggled a little bit kind of trying to navigate that side of, of the sport. Um, but, but I see value in it. Um, and I think that that is a real way to touch a lot of people. Um, but I think for me, I, I've, I've just sort of tried to kind of show up and put in the work and be honest about the work that I put in and, and try to sort of translate that into communicating with some others and trying to sort of, trying to sort of, um, yeah, also pass on some info to the next, to the next group of youngsters. And, and that yeah. was a big thing for me. Yeah, like I've, I always, like when I was coaching, I always would be like, hey, what's something that I wish I'd known. Uh oh, sorry if you're if it's time. I was like, yeah. What what's something that I wish? What what's something that I wish I'd been told? Um, and I, I've um, tried to kind of tried to kind of do that. So I don't know. Good question. Think, Hard question. I, trying my best. Um, I, I think um, that I think that that your story alone is inspirational, and it's as I said, there's there's no wrong answer to that, but it's, um, it's, you know, it's enough. It's, it's not only is it sufficient, but it, it exceeds what most people are able to give. And, um, and I think that that's something to be proud of. I hope so. I hope so. And I, and I, and I genuinely see this, right. I see my, I think my running career is sort of in, at, I'm sort of at the end of my professional running career, whether it's a couple more years or not, I'm, you know, in the grand scheme of things. But I see it as very much, you know, this part, this thing that 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 is a launching pad in a lot of ways for just the way that I'm that I that I live, the way that I approach the world, and um, and so I plan on doing a lot of good in ways that feel sort of less self-serving as okay, hey, how how fast can I run? Yeah. Um, 
I, and I, and I, and I, yeah, I genuinely sort of think that, that this sport, which teaches discipline and focus and consistency and deliberate action and learning uh, from the past to, 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 to make a better, to make better decisions in the present, um, you know, I think, and yeah, and I think sort of fosters community, emphasizes community, despite sort of the weird individual loneliness um, that comes with sort of getting on a plane and flying to Finland and, you know, racing and then coming home immediately right after. Um, I think that there are a lot, I think there's a lot in there. I think there's a lot of lessons in there that I, that will become clearer to me once also I have a little bit of distance from the sport and can sort of realize what I'm missing from it when it's not there. Yeah. Um, Cause it's been sort of a, it's been a part of my life for so long and it's sort of part of the fabric of my reality right now. And I think it'll be interesting to sort of have some distance from it and be able to say, Hey, Hey, what is it? What is, what does my life look like without this? And, um, and what am I, what am I missing? And then how can I sort of, and, and, and why is that important? And, um, yeah. And I think that that separation might bring some clarity to develop a, a new side of you. Like the, the, yeah. the P Peter, Peter post 30. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll save the anecdote, but I know that some of my biggest breakthroughs, some of the biggest opportunities have disguised themselves as um, kind of unknowns, right? And how mm -hmm. we, how we navigate those waters is what really uh, is what really kind of, kind of makes us, I think. But anyway, listen, I hate to do this, but I've got to, no, I've got to go. Awesome. Um, yeah. And it's dinner time I, over here. I really, yeah, you got to go, you got to go get some beers. If anyone's earned them, it's you. Yeah. Um, Not yet, but, unfortunately, but, but eventually I'll bring, okay. I'll send some nice Belgian beers. Uh, you know, we'll have to have one of those sometime. I, I would love to, man. You're going to be back in my hometown before I am. But um, Peter, I want to thank you so much for your time. And uh, it, it was really, really inspirational listening listening to you uh, uh share share your experience so i thank you truly for yeah, that yeah no not at all i don't know yeah not sure yeah anyways a couple nuts and bolts in there a couple weird little nuggets of the mind of a distance runner but um but uh but yeah so what so you have anyways well I, you've got to go but i also i feel like i didn't really get to hear you know you you, you were very focused uh, directed on um on my side, because I know your listeners know you and, 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 um, but anyways, but I would like to hear more about kind of what you're up to one of these days. So we can, we um, can talk anyways. again for sure. We yeah, can talk again. I, yeah. It's good to anyways. And I, yeah. And, and, and I don't know if it's, um, I don't know if it's helpful to have, um, like a bio of some kind that I can send you or something. I don't know if that makes it makes anything. I don't know if I'll, my I'll, story I'll, is. I'll, We'll, uh, we'll, me. I'll definitely, I'm going to put all that in the show notes and, um, and, but I'll reach okay. out to you. I'll reach out to you uh, via email and we'll get all that, that settled in. Okay. No stress. Anyways. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Have a, have a great day over there. Mine's winding right. down, uh, 10 hours later than you, but, um, <laughs> or nine hours later than you, but, uh, but yeah, have a great one. All right. Thank, thank you, you so much, Peter. Bye-bye. Talk soon.